Europe and the US, but maybe they can start selling in China. Okay? Then they get their revenues from China too. Okay? So here we can see most of the big global companies, they have already diversified their sales. Okay? Then what about costs? So we can restructure. Do you understand restructure? Re means do again or change. So change the structure. So we're going to shift our costs or revenues to other locations. Okay? So should the firm attempt to increase or decrease sales in specific countries? Are we too dependent on this country? So we need to decrease the sales? Or we don't have enough presence in this country? We need to increase the sales. What about our foreign suppliers? We only have one supplier from China. A little bit risky if the Chinese RMB gets expensive, right? Maybe we can get a supplier from Vietnam, from Eastern Europe. Okay? If the euro gets weak, it's going to be cheaper. Okay? Uh, so we can see that Kia has production facilities in Poland. Okay? Also has production facilities in the US. Okay, also has production facilities in Korea. Okay, so it's a little bit diversified. Its cost is in euros, in US dollars. Kia gets a lot of its revenues in US, euros and US dollars. Right, sells a lot of cars in Europe and the US. So also makes a production plant there. So that helps it. If the euro gets stronger, our revenues are going up. Great, our costs are also going up. Balances out. If the euro gets weaker, then our revenues are going down, but our costs are going down too. So it balances out a little bit. Okay. <clears throat> what about debt? Getting, getting debt in a foreign currency. So I have to decide if I'm getting a loan. Get a loan in US dollars, in euros, in yen, in pounds, in Korean won. Okay. So we can also change our mind about where we're getting the loans. For example, I have a big supplier in China, so I'm worried about the cost of the Chinese products going up. Where should I get a loan? Should I get a loan in China? No, the loan is going to be more expensive to pay back. Okay, if I get a loan, my costs are going to go up if the Chinese RMB gets stronger, but also my loan is going to be harder to pay back. Okay, so. Uh, the other way around, I'm getting a lot of revenues in China. Maybe I could get a loan in Chinese RMB. Okay? My revenues are bigger if the Chinese RMB gets stronger. Okay? And the loan is harder to pay back. So balance out. Okay? So we can think about those kind of things. So look at Nike. We talked about Kia. Nike used to maybe manufacture mostly in China, but also now in Vietnam, Indonesia, Thailand, okay, Cambodia, so on. Okay, so China's salary cost goes up, China's currency gets very stronger. Nike can increase production in other countries and decrease production in China. It has more flexibility. Okay, Argentina, Brazil, India, Mexico, South Africa. So Nike also invests in these countries, production plant. What about sales? What do you think means E-M-E-A? Europe, Middle East, Africa, okay? Asia, America, <coughs> South America. So we can still see most of its sales is in the US. But also, you know, more than half of its sales is from abroad, revenues. So we can see there's a slight problem for Nike here, okay? Most of their costs are in Asia. Costs are in Asia, Asian currencies. Where are their revenues? In the United States and Europe, right? Euros and dollars. Can you see any problem for Nike? What's the risk? So what's the risk for Nike? In the United States, this session, uh, their profit is the place down. Yeah, so first, before we even talk about currency risk, there's the economic risk that the US has a recession, so not as many people buy runners. 
right? But what about the, the exchange rate risk? Which currencies change what way? What, what would be the problem for Nike? Euro. Euro okay, that's foreign currencies in yuan, dong, ruby, bat. Okay? Foreign currencies in euros, pounds, and yen. So what's the problem for Nike? What does Nike not want to happen? Which one to get stronger and which one to get weaker? US dollar to get stronger and those to get weaker. US dollar gets stronger, revenue to go up. Yeah. Chinese currency to get weaker, costs to go down. Hmm? So what's the risk? Chinese currency stronger. Chinese currencies get stronger and? Weaker. weaker. What's been the trend of the Chinese currency against the US dollar and the euro over the last 10 years? Getting stronger. Is that a real problem for Nike? Yes. Right? So what if these cost currencies get stronger and the revenue currencies weaken? Okay, they have a negative impact on their profits. Okay? So we could put up the price in the revenue countries, increase the price in the US. Okay? On the other hand, if these currencies get weaker and these ones get stronger, we get the more positive impact on our profits. So the question is, how can Nike balance its overseas activities? What do you think Nike needs to do to balance its activities? Discuss with your partner. Financial hedging. I'll yes. so use financial hedging. Anything else? So their factory is diversification to other countries. Yeah, they could diversify, take back some jobs to the US. Okay? Try to increase their sales. Nowadays they're trying to increase their sales in China okay? and other countries. Okay? So. Uh, this is a comprehensive approach for assessing and managing foreign exchange exposure. So if you're doing the one about how should the company manage their exposure, this is a very important part. Okay? Step one, what type of exposure are we dealing with? Transaction exposure, economic exposure. Okay? Are we talking about just a contract 
or are we talking about future revenues and costs we don't know about? Okay. What currencies do we have? Look at Nike. Okay, rare. Is Nike long or short on the Chinese RMB? Does it want the Chinese RMB to get stronger or weaker? So is it long or short? Short. It's long on the dollar. Why? Are the net amounts worth hedging? Is it a very small company? It's not much money. Right? Or a big company? So, yes, then we need to hedge. Then step two, we need to try and forecast the exchange rate a little bit. Okay? So if we look at the Chinese RMB and the US dollar, what do you think will happen in the future? Why? Exporting company. Country. Country, they're exporting a lot. Maybe the Chinese one is undervalued against the other currencies, right? So it's, it's coming back slightly to equilibrium. Okay, China has managed to flow, and China seems to be taking this, this trend, right? Following this trend. Of course, in the summertime, because of the stock market problem, they briefly weakened their currency. But their government seems to be allowing their currency to get stronger, right? A little bit. So then, important to select the right forecasting model. So we look back at the model, we check exactly about all the things, okay? Okay, so then uh, next we go to step three. So what is the impact on earnings? If the Chinese RMB gets stronger, what's going to happen to our earnings? Higher or lower earnings? Lower, right? Cash flow, liabilities. Do we have loans in the Chinese RMB? Right? Could be, they could be a problem. Then we decide whether to hedge or not. Okay? We can look at the exchange rate change and say, maybe it's not that big problem, maybe we don't need to hedge. Because there's some cost for hedging, transaction cost. Okay? Otherwise, the impact is unacceptable. We go to, it's still unacceptable, we go to step five. Of course, here, the firm might feel it can benefit from its exposure. It might be the other way around. We might think we can make a profit. Okay. Step five, select the appropriate hedging instrument. So we have to choose which hedge is appropriate. Financial hedging, like forward contracts. Operational hedging, like changing our production. Okay. Changing, just diversifying our suppliers trying to diversify our sales, operational one. Okay, uh, this, you can, we, we'll talk about this with some case study, okay? We have to look at the cost involved with the contracts. The easiest one is just make a forward contract, okay? Uh, then, if we can get an advantage, we have to decide, are we going to make all open position or just a small open position? Okay, so we can do a forward contract for 50% or 30% or 80% of the money and leave 100% open or leave 50% open. So then uh, let's just review here with asking some questions to our partners. So discuss with your partner what types of exposure are there? Tell me two types. Two types of exposure we study. So step one, what types of exposure are there? So discuss with your partner. What are the two types of exposure? Two types of exposure, two main types. We're talking about the exchange rate, so inside the exchange rate, what are the two types of exposure? 
Do you know? Trey Young J. So that's the way we can hedge. But what's the type of exposure? Company has two different. What does exposure mean? What's another word for exposure? Risk or open. So, what two different types of risk does the company have in foreign exchange? Hmm? And okay, Kim Dag Young. Yes. Yes. Yes, what's the difference between transaction and economic exposure? Transaction we're talking about contracts. Fixed and known amounts. Okay, what about economic exposure? We can't, not so much unexpected, there's probably a better word. We expect to get revenues and we expect to have costs, but they're on what? Unknown, right? We know we'll get revenues, but we don't know how much it will be. Okay? So we have that kind of unknown uh, revenues and costs. Okay? Does everybody understand the difference? They are two different things. Okay? Uh, <coughs> okay, next one. We go to skip to step five. You just talk about. So we have what financial hedging and operational hedging, you said, right? So discuss with your partner, what is the difference between financial hedging and operational hedging? Give us some examples. Operational. So operations mean or operational. What does it mean to operate something? To make something work, to do something? What does financial mean? Money? Right? So then what's the difference between doing something like financially or doing something operationally? <coughs> okay, 
박형주 yes. What is the difference between those two different things? Can you give an example of financial hedging and an example of operational hedging? Okay, uh, Park John Wan. Choi Jin Yoo. But it's more useful for transaction exposure, right? Yeah. Why? What is financial hedging? Uh, because transaction transaction exposure is about the number and so what kind of financial hedging would you use if you have transaction exposure? Like the exchange rate. What's that called? Forward management. Forward contract. We use a forward contract. Okay. Then what is operate? That's financial hedging. Forward contracts. We'll talk about option contracts later. What is operational hedging? Means covering the risk of the economy. Exposure. How? To predict the economic index so, well, Practically, how are we going to do that kind of hedging? Like using the historical data mm -hmm. uh, index of the economic. So, Kim Sang Hee, can you give an example of operational hedging? Changing the location of our production, yes. Anything else? That's doing something, right? Operations, changing our operations, changing the place where our operations are. Anything else? Hmm? Subsidiaries, right? Changing our subsidiaries to different countries. Anything else? You understand diversification? Changing markets. Yeah, diversify our markets where we get our revenues from. Okay. So that is operational hedges. Okay. Operational is something we do inside our company to deal with the currency exposure. We change something inside our company, internal. Okay. Uh, we can also use these ones, right? Risk shifting. We talked about. It. Making it in the other country's currency. Netting. Okay? Deciding we owe this much in this currency, this much in this currency, making the average. Leading and lagging. Okay? So we explained about those things before. Okay? So also we have divert we mentioned diversification and restructuring. Okay, restructuring is the say moving our some part of our company to somewhere else, changing our sales. Do you understand restructuring? <coughs> some examples here. Okay, so then uh, let's look at a case study. We're going to look at this case study of Lufthansa. Do you, love, do, do you know Lufthansa? What does Lufthansa do? Uh, airplane company. What country are they from? This is the simple one. We have transaction exposure, right? Uh, in January 1985, German airline company Lufthansa signed a contract with Boeing to buy 20 Boeing 737 airplanes. Boeing agreed to deliver the airplanes to Lufthansa one year later, in January 1986. Uh, Lufthansa agreed to make a single payment of $500 million when the planes were delivered. 
The spot exchange rate was 3.2 Deutschmark to one dollar. So we have we have to pay 500 million dollars. Okay. Then we have 3.2 Deutschmarks for one dollar. Okay. How many? How many Deutschmarks do we need to pay? 1.6 billion. Right? Deutschmarks. What's the risk? Currency change. What happens to the currency? So what's the risk for Lufthansa? The dollar is stronger. They, their liberty is not allowed. They need to pay five hundred dollars, right? So if the dollar gets stronger, they're in trouble. So give us an example of the dollar getting stronger. 500 million multiplied by $100 going to be more Deutschmark for every dollar, right? Let's say four. Okay? They are, it's going, they're going to have to pay two. So that's going to be an extra 20% uh, or 30%, right? About 25% extra. Do you want to take that risk? Planes will be 25% more expensive. Can you make a profit? What are you going to do? Make a forward contract. Okay, so here's some background. Since 1982, the US dollar was appreciating against the German mark. Okay, we were talking about 1985. In January, the dollar was 2.3 marks. So now it was 3.2. It had appreciated over 40%. Many analysts said now the US dollar was overvalued, but it's still getting stronger. Government intervention to weaken the dollar was not being discussed. Okay? So the trend is the dollar is getting stronger against the, the mark. So if the dollar continues its trend to get stronger, we could have a problem. Okay. So the issue is, some forecasters were saying, well, US dollar is overvalued. They were using the absolute PPP, okay? Historically overvalued. So we expect it to get weaker. But other forecasters are saying, no, it will continue to get stronger. So we can see that the size of the contract, which was in US dollars, was seen to be too big for uncovered, uncovered. Right? This is too big for uncovered. If we have to pay that much extra, we won't make any profit. Okay? So what would you recommend that Lufthansa do and why? Discuss with your partner. Here is the exchange rate. Since 1982, the US dollar is getting stronger. So what are you going to suggest to Lufthansa and why? So discuss with your partner. You are the CFO, Chief Financial Officer. You need to make the decision. So Trey came in. Uh, Yang Yong Sok, what are you going to do? You are the Chief Financial Officer at Lufthansa. You can make the decision. You have the authority. What are you going to do? 
What do you mean keep the contract? Just take. Take the risk? Yes. You're going to take the risk? You can see that the US dollar is getting a lot stronger. The trend is US dollar is getting stronger. What if it continues to get stronger? You could lose money. E somehow. What would you do? And that's okay, we can explain again. Okay, so we have Lufthansa, you know Lufthansa, they're buying airplanes from the US. Do they have to pay in dollars or in Deutschmark? If they're buying something from the US, do they have to pay in dollars or pay in Deutschmark? Dollars, Boeing wants dollars. Do they have to pay now or after one year? They have to pay dollars after one year. So, what's the risk? I have to pay a lot of dollars after one year, what's the risk for me? Dollar gets weaker or dollar gets stronger? I'm paying dollars. Do I want to pay less dollars or more dollars? Huh? Yes. So, if the dollar gets stronger or dollar gets weaker, which is going to be the worst situation for me? Stronger. You should be very quick to answer that question, right? You should write that down. If I'm paying money, <coughs> I want the foreign currency to get weaker, right? If I'm receiving money, I want the foreign currency to be stronger. stronger. Okay, you should be very quick to answer that kind of situation. So write that down now if you're not quick to answer that. Okay, I'm receiving foreign currency. I want it to be what? Stronger. Receiving, I, I'm receiving, I want it to be stronger, okay? I'm paying, I want it to be weaker, okay? So, the risk is the US dollar gets stronger, okay? I want it to get weaker, okay? We can see the amount is very high, okay? We're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars, 500 million dollars, 1.6 billion Deutschmarks, okay? So what are you going to do? That's the question about this risk. We just did an example. If the dollar got stronger and went up to four, <coughs> we're going to have to pay an extra 400 million Deutschmark. Okay? He says that's okay. okay. I'm asking you, what do you think? Are you going to do anything about the risk? What can you do? talked about something in the class that we could do, in this case, to reduce the risk. What are our options? Hmm? Make a forward contract, right? What does that mean, to make a forward contract? So, before you fix the, fix the rate before the dollar gets Fix the rate, right? So we can fix this, right? It will be slightly different. Why will it be slightly different? Why would it be slightly different than 3.2? It might be 3.25. Why would it be slightly different? Inflation is different between the two countries, right? Interest rate is different. Interest rate parity. It won't be exactly the same, but more or less. Okay? So, are you going to make a forward contract then? Or not? Do you want to fix this? Or not? Yes. Is somehow. What? Fix this. Do you want to change your mind? <laughs> hmm? You change your mind? You're going to make a forward contract? Yeah. So 
So let's see what happened. Okay. So as we said, the size of the contract was too large for an uncovered. Uncovered. You understand uncovered? Okay. On the other hand, most anal analysts were predicting a weakening of the U.S. dollar. So even though the trend was getting stronger, people said historically the dollar is too overvalued, so it should get weaker. Okay. So if it got weaker, it's going to be an advantage, right? Say it's going to be two, right? It's going to be just 100 or, or 1 billion Deutsche Mark, right? Then we get an advantage, it's cheaper. So what was the decision? Lufthansa decided to hedge 50% of its exposure with a forward contract. So they used the forward contract, but just for 50%. Okay? This forward contract was set at uh, Deutsche Mark 3.2. So Lufthansa would purchase 250 million now, right? Now we do 250 million at 3.2. The other 250 million we we'll leave until the end. Okay. So the remaining 50% was left uncovered to take advantage of a possible weakening of the dollar. So actually, when Lufthansa <coughs> analysed the situation, if we look back at the steps here, uh, we have the six steps, right? <coughs> We can see that uh, we know the exposure, transaction exposure, right? Step two, forecasting the exchange rate. So Lufthansa forecasted the exchange rate. They decided it's going to get weaker. Okay? We think it's going to get weaker, not stronger, even though the trend is stronger. Okay? So then they made their decision. Okay, so during the 12-month period, the US dollar did weaken. It went from 3.2 to 2.45. This represented a decline of 23%. Okay, so if you had hedged 100%, you would need to pay more money, right? If you did nothing, you would have been right. <laughs> Why did you change your mind? <laughs> in the end, it's always easy in hindsight, right? Of course, this forward contract looks better is the, is the correct decision at the time, but when we look back in hindsight, decisions can look different, right? So when we look back, actually it would have been better not to do anything, okay? So the cost of the total liability in the end was 1.4. 1, 4, 1, 2. So less than 1.6, but not as good as if we had left. So Lufthansa guessed correctly, okay? If they had covered 100% of their exposure, their cost would have been 1.6 billion marks. So this is just showing in the real life. We, we have to consider this as well, right? Step two, forecasting the exchange rate. The company can try to make a forecast about the exchange rate, a little bit, okay? If they think the exchange rate is going one way or the other, they can try to get some advantage. Uh, actually, this guy got criticized because he didn't uh, make more profit on this. Okay, so he did get a new contract, but just a shorter term contract. Minister of Transport thought he might have made more advantage on that case. Okay, so do you have any question about this case? Study? Hmm? About Lufthansa? Because they forecasted the foreign exchange rate, they made their forecast, you understand forecast? Yes. Their guess for the future, and they said, we think the dollar will get weaker, we think it's going to go on this side. So if you... Number six, select the appropriate strategy to position the firm, right? Consider partial open position versus complete open position. Okay? Which financial contract will achieve your objective? 
So when we look at the forecast and we say that this is going to be favorable, our forecast is favorable. Do you understand favorable? It means we want this. Our forecast is what we want. Then we can decide. We don't have to do 100%. We can do 50% or 10% or 80%. If it's on this side, if it's on this side, we think the exchange rate is going to be not favorable, that's, then we're going to do 100%, right? Or 80% or 70%, a higher percent here, okay? But this is a different situation. If it's favorable, we might just do partial hedging. That's our guess, it's going to be favorable, okay? So, good question. So, any more questions? Okay, so then for the next class, just at home, just try to read and understand again, review the case study of Lufthansa. Lufthansa. Okay, and make group. There are 24 students, so there's no group of five, or 23 students, right? So we have five groups of four and three, one group of three students. Okay?